See if I can get the mic on this morning. Hey, very good. <clears throat> Works. Good morning. Good morning. I hope. And on this uh, Sunday after Christmas, we have an opportunity to <clears throat> give thanks and praise to God for the uh, gifts of all gifts. So uh, I understand that you uh, changed some one of the Christmas carols around. I did. Yes. Have did. yourself a COVID little Christmas or something <laughs> like that. I hope that everybody uh, survived Christmas in spite of the COVID. I was talking to John White this morning, and you know, they always sing his favorite song at Christmas. I'm dreaming of a white, white Christmas, Christmas, John right. White. Yeah, yeah okay, that's yeah. good. Maybe. No. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we have uh, somebody that is celebrating their first anniversary today. We do? Yes. Who's that? Uh, Mark and Judy Flug. Oh, how is, how is it their first? Isn't that correct? Mark and Judy, where are you here? There you are. First? First? 51st. 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 Okay. All right. <laughs> right. It was, All right. I knew it was close. Happy anyway. anniversary. <laughs> I, I stopped counting a long time ago. Yes. So. We have uh, a, a welcome guest back at Christ Our King today, uh, getting married next Saturday, uh, Kristen Mundorf. Right. Has and a few Abigail? words for us today. Come on up here, Kristen. Where's Abigail here? There she Abigail. is back there. And she, the bride to be here. That's a great name, Abigail. Yes. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, as Pastor Tom, your, your voice is getting stronger. At the, <laughs> they teach you that at the seminary? Uh, yes, they do actually. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Don refers it to it as the cemetery, though. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, good morning. So as Pastor Tom introduced me, my name is Christian Mundorf. Uh, I grew up here at Christ Our King, and I'm very happy to be back this week. Uh, I'm here to talk actually on behalf of the Endowment Fund. So the Endowment Fund is uh, the organized generosity of this congregation. So I, I really want to thank the members of the Endowment Fund and especially this congregation because I receive a scholarship from the endowment fund to help fund my seminary education. Uh, and it, it really helps and, and makes my education much more possible, thanks to the generosity of the endowment fund and this congregation. So I want to talk a little bit about my seminary education. Uh, this quarter, we run on quarters, which are actually trimesters, if you can keep that straight. <laughs> So this, this quarter, I am taking my second preaching course. Uh, if you were here this summer, you may have seen me preach. Uh, and hopefully I'll be continuing to get better and hone my skills in preaching. I am also studying about baptism. Uh, it's, you know, it's, one of the, it's one of the cornerstones of our faith. Uh, it, it's so very important. I'm so very excited to get to learn more and more about baptism and the Doctrine of the Resurrection with Dr. Scare, who you, uh, yes. you should remember. Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, Dr. It, Scare would say, uh, most of you guys are going to wreck the first five churches you're in. Yep. Yeah. And he still tells us that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's so wonderful to have so many great, uh, really excellent professors. And some of them, like Dr. Scare, you have had as well. Uh, did you ever have Dr. Weinrich? I did. You did? Yes, I did. What did you take him for? Uh, I think it was a world history or church history. Church probably history. Church history. All right. Tough class. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's a tough professor. Yes. Uh, but there's so many great professors that I'm so, I'm, I'm just so blessed to be able to learn from and, and study with. Uh, but not all the learning at the seminary happens inside the classroom. In fact, sometimes we joke that just as much learning happens outside the classroom as inside the classroom. Uh, and even with our restrictions with COVID, it hasn't stopped that. We've been able to continue learning and socializing even with physical distancing and masks. I never liked the term social distancing. I know. It's, we, uh, we don't need to be socially distant, just physically distant. You're stealing an idea from my sermon today. So. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll, stop. I'll stop that right there. Then. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's so wonderful to get, be able to meet with all these people uh, in physically distant situations. Uh, in addition to my work on the seminary, I am also doing field work at a local congregation named Martini Lutheran Church. Now, Martini Lutheran Church, by the way, is older than the drink martini. 
<laughs> That's uh, good. Good humor. <laughs> either it's older or no German had ever heard of a martini there at that point. There you go. Uh, and it's so great to be able to do field work there and, and learn uh, you know, in the field, in a congregation much like this one. Uh, my field work pastor, my supervisor there, Pastor Teasdale, he's, he's a great pastor, a great guy to learn under, and uh, it's just, it's so wonderful. Uh, and as was mentioned, this week I will be getting married to my lovely fiance, Abby, uh, here actually with Pastor yeah. Tom. Looking forward to it. <laughs> and all this is to say that the endowment fund really helps make this possible. It's, I, I'm so blessed by the endowment fund, by this congregation which supports me with donations and most especially with prayer. So whenever you, know, you have your prayers, think of the seminary, think of all the students there because we really need your prayers. Uh, the endowment fund, by the way, they are taking new applications, uh, particularly for those studying for full-time church work, whether that's at seminary or at one of the Concordias, such as uh, for uh, DCEs or other such work. Uh, but it also takes applications for special projects, such as missions, uh, ministry, or outreach projects. So if you have a project or are looking into studying for full-time church work, go to the endowment fund. Uh, Dean Grab set me up to be here today. Uh, so talk to Dean Grab or any of the other members of the endowment fund committee. The applications are due by April 15th. Thank you very much. Hey, Chris, thanks a lot. And Pastor Don, you got any advice for him on the, uh, the mechanics of a good sermon? <laughs> I thought you were going to say it's got to have a great introduction and a great ending, and the distance between the two is to be relatively short. All right. Thanks, Chris. Thank God's blessings to you. Let's have a quick prayer for Chris and Abigail. Heavenly Father, we thank you that in your incredible love, you brought the two of them together. We pray that you would bless their marriage this week. We pray for his continued seminary education and all the people at the seminary. Uh, Lord, we know that we're entering a time where there is a great shortage for those who proclaim the gospel full time. So uh, bless our church's arm in this endeavor. We ask and we praise you for all the blessings and all the people that are studying for ministry. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. One last announcement from uh, the president of our congregation, Steve Frederick. The water's still going over the dam today in Dundee when you came by? Yes, sir. But you said somebody was standing in the middle of the river yesterday fishing. Yes, they were. Yes, ah. they were. Brave people. I, I, I'll take that as brave, not stupid, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I'm here to, today to uh, announce that uh, a little ahead of time that uh, we're going to have a voters meeting in January, January 17th. Uh, we're, we haven't uh, publicized the agenda yet. That's coming next week, so it gives you something to look forward to. But I'm here to announce a little early because we're doing things a little differently this year because uh, we are going to have the meeting uh, part of a Zoom meeting as well. Okay? So uh, we know this is new to some and not as new for others, but we're giving you the heads up ahead of time so that uh, you can make whatever plans you need to, so you can be a part of the meeting. We want everybody to be a part of the meeting. Um, we, um, these are extraordinary circumstances that we're having with, due to the pandemic. And so we've done some research uh, with other churches and with the uh, Senate. And so we are, are, have uh, devised a plan. Uh, by, with some computer savvy people that are uh, more knowledgeable than I am and uh, they're leading us into being able to do this as fairly and uh, compliant as we need to be with this okay but we do need you to be a, a part of it so um, I want to encourage you to do that and uh, look forward to, to all of us being a part of that 
Okay, and this also gives us practice so that when we find our new full-time pastor, if we need to have a Zoom meeting, this will also help us with that process as well. So it's a good learning experience for us as well. This is not going to be a normal thing for our future meetings. I just want you to know that ahead of time. This is not going to be a, a, a norm for us. We will get back in person and when God allows us to do that. So, um, okay. Um, Pastor Tom and Pam are going to be retiring. Pam, Pastor Tom is. Anyway, uh, so... Now my wife's going to be working full-time. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, uh, this is a new chapter in his life, and, and this is not, uh, uh, it's not an easy thing for uh, <clears throat> retirement, because people think of retirement as doing something, but uh, um, I, I, I believe retirement is just a new chapter. And um, I, I've reminded Pastor Tom when we've had our little talks here and there that uh, Moses didn't get started until he was 80, so uh, <laughs> he, he just, just may need to Keep in mind, you know, what his future might be, so. Uh, but uh, this being the end of the year, uh, we have a lot of uh, new things finishing up, but we also have a new year ahead of us, okay? Hopefully we'll be leaving COVID behind us. And um, God has called this body of Christ together, and uh, with all of our gifts and uh, our weaknesses, and uh, he's called us together for a purpose. And we need your gifts that God's provided you. And uh, there is a lot of need here and there for different positions on the council and or on committees or running the, the film, the, the monitor in the back. Uh, a lot of different things that not all of us probably know about everything. But uh, we, want, uh, we want you to pray about it. And we want you to think and respond to how God is leading you to, uh, to do. So uh, you're, you're needed. So it's up to you and God to decide when you're going to step forward and uh, in wh what place. So we appreciate that and thank you. Thank you, Steve. We focus our hearts and minds on worship with the singing of our opening hymn.
We rise in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We praise you, God the Father. You love, you love the world so much that you sent your only begotten Son to live in our midst and clothe him in human flesh and blood. We praise you, God the Son. You came into this world to give your life for us that we might have the gift of life. We praise you, God, the Holy Spirit. Your, Your presence among us and dwelling, dwelling in us brings us life and light. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the, and the government, government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting, Everlasting Father, Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will, he will reign, reign on, on David's, David's throne and, and over his, his kingdom, kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. And the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. To God, to God be glory and praise, both now, both now and, and evermore. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, there is a time when the world sat in darkness, separated from God, because of its sin. And we human beings were unable to find God in that darkness. And so out of his great mercy he came near to us as a baby born of the virgin. Bringing with him the great light of our salvation. I encourage you to come near to God. Open your hearts to him. And confess your sin. Heavenly Father. We, we confess, confess that, that we have, have sinned, sinned against you in our, in our thoughts, words, words and, and deeds. The world has tempted us in this Christmas season to put our delight and joy in material things, to be envious of others, and to center our celebrations around ourselves rather than on you. Thus we have sinned against you and against one another. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. The, the celebration you desire is the worship of the heart. heart. Forgive our sins, sins O Lord, Lord, for the for sake, sake of the babe of Bethlehem, Bethlehem Jesus, Jesus Christ, who died, who died for, for us. us. Decorate our hearts with repentance and joy that our Christmas celebration may be pleasing to you. This child whose birth we celebrate came among us to live perfectly in our stead, to give his life completely as a payment for all of our sin, to rise again from the dead, from the grave, for our justification, and to give us new life. It is in his stead, and in his name, and at his command, that I, as a called and ordained servant to the word, forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Please be seated. <clears throat> My friends, in the days that immediately follow the celebration of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ on Christmas, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me, have been utilized by the church for a time of special commemorations. December 26th is a festival of St. Stephen, the first martyr. December 27th is a festival of St. John, one of the best known of the disciples. St. John is remembered as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And he plays a very prominent part in the years of Jesus' earthly ministry, one of the most active of the apostles in the time after our Lord's ascension, when the Christian church had its beginnings. He is honored for his contributions to the New Testament, including the Gospel according to St. John, the three epistles, and the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. John is also commemorated <clears throat> in artwork, in literature, and in song. The son of a successful business, uh, fishing businessman and a caring mother, John was in the inner circle of the disciples of Jesus. From the cross, Jesus entrusted his mother Mary to the care of John because he knew that she would be cared for in a kindly way. Tradition suggests that Mary lived with John for some 15 years after the time of the ascension of Jesus. 
And even though the words of John's writings and through them, we hear Jesus confidently affirming of who he was and is and why he had come to earth. We have such fantastic statements as, I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. I am the waters of life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And especially, I am the resurrection and the life. These words recorded and shared by John have inspired all generations of Christian people. And so we join in the unending chorus of thanks and praise. And we join together in singing from all, for all the saints. Good morning. Good morning. The Old Testament for this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, beginning with verse 10. Nations will acknowledge the chosen one of the Lord. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up, and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make the righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake I will not remain quiet, till her vindication shines out like the dawn her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your vindication and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read responsively from Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hand are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. 
The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praises endure forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle lesson comes from the book of Galatians, chapter 4, beginning with verse 4. At the right time, God sent his Son into the world. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, the Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but God's child, and since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read the gradual. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has, he has done, done marvelous things. things. In honor of our Lord Jesus Christ, we rise for the gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now when the time of the purification according to the law of Moses had been completed, Mary and Joseph took Jesus to Jerusalem to pre present him to the Lord as it was written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord. And they also went to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves, two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, and he was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to Simeon by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And moved by the Spirit, Simeon went into the temple courts. And when Mary and Joseph brought the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took the babe in his arms, praising God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes, my very own eyes, have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for the glory of your people, Israel. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated for our hymn. Oh, yeah. 
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, the eternal three-in-one, God the Father who created us, God the Son who has redeemed us by his blood and who is coming again, and God the Holy Spirit who has brought you to faith and keeps you ever growing in your faith through the word and through the sacraments. These words from John's gospel, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace, mercy, and truth. He came to his own, and yet his own received him not. And yet to all who receive him, he gives them the right to become the children of God. And this is the very word of our God as it is found in John chapter 1. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Well, has this ever happened to you? You know, you spend uh, uh, your time and your energy uh, to purchase a gift for someone, and yet for one reason or another, they're unable uh, to show up at your Christmas gathering. You know, for many of us this year, that probably happened because of COVID-19. And there's probably in some households this morning uh, some gifts like these two gifts up here, uh, that are still under the tree. By the way, these are two real gifts for two eighth grade confirmants. I'm not going to tell you who they are, but if you're here this morning, you better come up and check and see if your name is on the tag. At this point, they're unclaimed. You know, this may be a stretch, but it occurred to me that there are many people in our world today who have never claimed the gift of Christ. And everything that he has done for us through his birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection. That's really the picture that we have in today's gospel lesson from John. So if you have your Bibles with you this morning, I would ask that you would open them now to John chapter 1. I want to begin by looking at verse 11. Verse 11, in my estimation, is one of the saddest verses in all of Scripture. Because it says this, Jesus was in the world, the world was made by him, and yet the world knew him not. He came to his own, and yet his own received him not. But what does it mean to receive Jesus? And what doesn't it mean? John explains that those who received Jesus did what? They believed on his name. It took no special effort on their part. They didn't have greater intelligence than everybody else. They weren't necessarily morally upright. They simply saw him, they heard him, they believed in him, and they trusted in him as their savior. They believed because God, the Holy Spirit, had brought them to faith. You know, some people claim that receiving Christ is a work on our part whereby we accomplish something. 
But John, however, emphasizes just the opposite. It is purely by God's grace. It is totally undeserved. As we talked about on Christmas Eve, Christmas is all of God's doing. You know, Jesus said the same thing in John chapter, what was it, 15. And by the way, just a little plug. Remember uh, St. John on this, the 27th, and you're going to be teaching a Bible class coming up uh, about what? The I, am the I am statements found in the Gospel of John. Jesus said in John chapter 15, you didn't choose me, but I did what? I chose you. You know, it's a lot like receiving a gift. Again, it's unearned. It's not deserved. It is freely given by the, the giver. But of course, we have to remember that with any gift, and I pray that none of you did this. I know none of you would. Did you get a gift this Christmas and refuse to open it? Did you reject it? Did you stuff it away in the closet? Did you simply say, I don't want this? Again, these words in today's lesson, I believe, are a summary of the reaction that many people have in this world to the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He came to this world, and yet the world received him not. Isn't that what happened from the get-go in that little town called Bethlehem? You know why they called it a little town? Because in the biblical times, the square footage of Bethlehem was no bigger than a football field. You know, that first Bethlehem, that first Christmas in Bethlehem, there was no room for them in the inn. And then it continued on. Again, he came to his own and his own received him not. Herod, the evil henchman there of the devil, wanted to stop Jesus in his tracks before he even got out of the manger, before he could begin his public ministry. And then it continued as he grew up. He grew up in that little town, that obscure place called Nazareth. What do we remember about Nazareth? What did they say about Jesus? Oh, could any good thing come from Nazareth? That's what they used to say about Britain. Can any good thing come from Britain or Macon or Cone uh, or all the big other towns around here? Uh, and then it continued on. Think about Jesus. Jesus goes to the temple with his parents. Mary and Joseph, when he's just 12 years old, and the uh, religious leaders are amazed at his words. He can't understand it. How is it that he knows the word of God better than we do? And yet, the religious leaders would declare war on him. Eventually, they would accuse him of blaspheme. They would ultimately consider him public enemy number one, a criminal, and they would sentence him to death on a cross nailed between two thieves. Like I said before, he came to his own, and yet his own received him not. Christ himself is the gift of Christmas. And yet, not much has changed in 2,000 years. He is the one gift that we can't live without. The most important gift of dying for sinful mankind. And yet, isn't it sad that even in churches today, even among some clergy and some theologians, that they refuse to stand up for Jesus? They refuse. They throw his word under the bus. They claim that his life and his resurrection is not true. And he is the one who is literally even thrown out of the day that is recognized as his birth. So we're told that it's not politically correct to wish someone a Merry Christmas. The only place where his name is used, where it's often used, is in vain or swearing. You know, have you ever been on the golf course and heard Jesus' name? I have. Uh, but you know, I have never heard anybody on the golf course use Mohammed or Abraham or Buddha's name in vain. Isn't that interesting? Again, if ever there was a time in history for us to proclaim the good news of salvation, it's today. 
Luke chapter 2, verse 11 puts it how? Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And his name shall be called Emmanuel, Christ the Lord. It is good news of great joy. But you know, maybe that's the problem. You know, I know Jackson, you work for uh, Channel 4 there. And, and, and you have, I didn't get a chance to see you on Channel 4 there this week. But, uh, you know, and this is nothing against Channel 4 or any of the other news outlets. But the great majority of news today, whether in TV or in the newspaper, on the internet, is it good news or is it bad news? Most of it's bad news. A bombing in Nashville. COVID-19, and the list goes on and on and on and on. And so, uh, you know, a few years ago, there was one news outlet that decided to change things up. I think it was a newspaper, and they decided to publish only good news. But of course, it doesn't last, because good news somehow doesn't sell, does it? You know, tomorrow, the newspapers are going to be filled with bad news. Again, good news doesn't sell. But it is my hope and my prayer that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we continue to tell the good news to our neighbors, our family, our friends, our relatives, to a world that looks at Jesus still as the unclaimed gift. You know, as Steve Frederick said, Steve, you're stealing my material again. You know, we dare not stop. We dare not stop proclaiming the word of God. It's going to be a challenging year. Yeah, we're hoping and praying that uh, COVID-19 will come to an end. But still the challenges will remain in many areas of life, especially in the church. You know, I pray in this particular instance, the experts are not right. And seeing the people here today, I pray it's, they're not right when it comes to this church. But the experts tell us that after COVID-19, one-third of the people who were worshiping regularly before this pandemic will not come back to worship. I pray that's not the case. You know, activated, empowered by the Holy Spirit, we can't stop glorifying God in our worship, in the study of His Word, in our Word, in our work, so that all people might know the good news of salvation. So let me just change gears here as I bring this to a close. So what did you get this year for Christmas? Pastor Don, that's a really interesting gift that you gave me. I really like it. It's a uh, warning light that you put up your car brakes down on the road. And I turned it on, my, turned it on in my living room last night. My wife said, turn that thing off. <laughs> But I like it. It would make a great children's message. So when we get back to doing children's messages in the new year, let's use that, okay? You know, did you get what you wanted? Were you surprised by some of your gifts? And did you really get what you really wanted? You know, what do most people want? Most people want to be loved. Is that unusual? Is that a surprise? Everybody wants to be loved. But do you want real love? If you want real love, look in the manger. There is real love. The one hymn says, what wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul, for my soul. Again, look to the manger, but not only look to the manger, but look behind the manger to the cross. It's a love that keeps on giving. It is a love that is free. It is a love, though, that can be rejected. God in his very nature wants to give you today and every day his love. What else do people want? I'm thinking that right now during COVID-19, people want security. You know, heaven knows that we need security. God wants you to be secure. So what does God tell you? God says, cast all of your cares, cast all of your troubles on me because I care for you. 
He wants to provide you not only with physical security, but he wants to provide you today and in the new year with eternal security. Believe him. Receive him as your savior. The one who promises you everlasting life. I'm thinking that there's probably a lot of people who want to be rich. But you know what? Do you realize that you already are rich? You have been given a gift that will not rot, rust, or fade away. Again, God has made you and me eternally rich by the blood and the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Or maybe you want to be beautiful. I watch all those programs in the middle of the night about health care or about those uh, makeup stuff, you know? You want to be beautiful? You got to, you know, I get up at four o'clock sometimes because I can't sleep and that's all that's on TV. So I watch that stuff. I say, why? You know, who is more beautiful than a person whose face is no longer creased by the sins of the past, but whose face is filled with the smiles of sins forgiven. It's hard to see you smiling with that mask on, but I know that you have that incredible smile that comes from knowing that your sins are forgiven. So again, what do you really want for Christmas? I pray, look to the manger, but look not only to the manger, look to the cross. Stop today and remember, that's the real gift that once again we have been given this year. Others may not know it. Others may still be living in a falsehood. And we dare not stop. And then one last thing. Kristen, you know, you were talking about social distancing. You know, this is not a time for us to social distance ourselves from God. We don't have to be socially distance from God because he is as near to us today as his word and as his sacraments and he promises us again today and every day in this new year that he is never going to leave us he is never going to forsake us he is going to be with us always even to the very end of the age the word became flesh and it dwelt among us we have beheld his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and mercy and truth. He came to his own, and yet his own did not receive him. And yet to all who receive him, like you, to all who receive him, to those who believe on his name, he gives you the right to become the children of God. So don't let him be that unclaimed gift in your life. And that's the good news from Christ our King today and every day. Let's pray. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Thank you, Lord, that you have once again gifted us with the gift of yourself, the gift that we can't live without. Lord, we pray and we ask this in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. We join together in singing that old uh, gospel hymn, uh, God Loves Me Dearly. God loves me dearly. Creation. God loves me dearly. Loves even me. For I'll say again, God loves me dearly, dearly loves even me. I was in slavery, sin, death, and darkness.
dearly beloved members for many, many years. Marge Liedel uh, was ushered into the church triumphant uh, on the uh, Christmas Eve morning, if I remember correctly. Uh, could you give us some information about the uh, memorial service? Her memorial service will be on Tuesday. I forget the time. Barb, do you remember what time that starts? I think it's 1 o'clock to 3. They'll be at the funeral home in Milan. It will be an outdoor drive-by visitation with the family. And then we will do a short service at the cemetery. Okay. So we continue to uh, keep Marge, uh, Margie's uh, family in our prayers. Gathered as God's people and heirs of an eternal inheritance, let us pray for the whole church for all who bear the name of Jesus Christ, who is indeed our light and our salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We rise as we continue with our prayers. As we remember St. John, apostle and evangelist, we pray for the church, asking that through her, the joyous news of salvation may be proclaimed as the Holy Spirit directs us. And we pray also for us at Christ our King, as we continue the search for a new shepherd to lead us in proclaiming your good news. Give us faith to acknowledge and rejoice in the fellowship we share in Christ with people here and in every place, that we may see in each sister and brother in Christ a reflection of your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord of all, watch over our nation and grant your divine favor to all who bear office in our land. Pray especially as the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature, to all those who make, administer, and judge our laws. Help them to serve all those in their care according to your holy will, that we may live peacefully in safety. We pray that you would save us from the pestilence and the plague, especially help us as we continue to battle the COVID. We pray for those who are on the front lines of such service. We pray for those who have lost their jobs due to the shutdowns, for businesses that are in peril. We ask your blessing upon them and give them the strength as they continue through this. And for times of unseasonable weather and dangers that are ever present in our lives, grant us your blessing as one calendar year closes and another begins. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, our, Hear prayer. our prayer. Give special measure and blessing to those with special needs. We especially remember the sick, the shut-in, those dealing with depression, those who have sorrow. We pray for those who are near to be taken into the next life. We pray for others known to us who at this time are in need of prayer, especially those that we hold so tenderly within our hearts. Help us to be people who bless, who encourage, who strengthen all those in our circles of relationship and beyond. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And Lord, we thank you for special occasions, for those who celebrate anniversaries, celebrate birthdays. And we especially ask your blessing upon Abby and Christian as they exchange their wedding vows before your altar this coming Saturday. We pray that you would continue to help all of our families live with you at the center of their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And Lord, we thank and praise you for our university students and all others who have been able to come home to be with their families uh, during this time. We pray that you would continue to help them to celebrate the good news that you give them and help us always as your families to look to you for guidance and direction, and especially for the Advent gifts that we find in your Son, Jesus, the gift of hope, the gift of peace, the gift of love, the gift of joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And Sovereign Lord, we remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in your church on earth, who now rest from their labors. We especially pray for the family of Margie Lidl, Jack Steeb, and others whom we name within our hearts. 
Keep us in fellowship with all of your saints. Bring us at last to the joys of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And together we pray, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Before Pastor Tom comes to give us the benediction, I would remind us again, our New Year's Eve worship service at 6 o'clock with Holy Communion. And uh, next Sunday, we'll again have one service. One service. And if you would, please, sir. Just uh, uh, as the closing hymn, I will dismiss you this morning from the back. I will come back there as much as you want to uh, fellowship with your fellow believers. Uh, I'd encourage you to do that outside the doors, but I'll dismiss you by row. So again, uh, Pastor Don and I... Uh, we'll be continuing, uh, we'll be sending a newsletter out this week, uh, but kind of laying out, you're still going to see Pastor Don and I kicking around here, right? Uh, he and I will, I will be following his schedule on retirement. So you work about, what, 20 hours or more, probably 40 to 50. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you do all the time be, when you're not here, but you are such a great blessing wow. to me personally. Thank you. And uh, I, you know, I couldn't imagine doing ministry these last few years without you and with so many kind people here at Christ our King. So uh, thank you to you for being my pastor as well. Uh, but we will continue to uh, meet the needs of the congregation during this vacancy on Sunday morning. You probably just won't see us in the office all the time. But we'll let you know more about that in the newsletter. Receive now the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.